Whether it's curiosity about what your heart rate is doing while you're rowing, or maybe you're training with heart rate zones or a Maffetone rate cap, you're going to need to find a reliable way to show your heart rate while you're rowing. Here then are a few ideas on what may or may not work for you. Nearly all heart rate monitors will connect to your phone or display your heart rate on a watch. But to make it easier to check it and be able to compare it to other bits of data like your speed and stroke rate, you'll want to have it displayed on the rowing machine's monitor. So, first things first, does your rowing machine have a monitor which can show your heart rate? On Concept 2's, the PM4 will connect wirelessly to a heart rate sensor which broadcasts via Ant Plus. And the PM5 can see either Bluetooth or Ant Plus devices. If you have a PM2, 3 or 4, you can use a Polar H9 or 10 chest strap if you have the connection accessory from the Concept 2 website. I'll put a link in the description. If you use another brand of rowing machine, you'll need to check the manual to find out what will work. I know you can connect directly to the skill row with a Bluetooth strap, and if you use the RP3 app with an RP3 rowing machine, you can connect a Bluetooth sensor to that too. Water rowers use a dedicated heart rate monitoring kit to connect to the S4 performance monitor via Ant Plus. The next question is whether to use an optical sensor on your wrist, usually in the form of a sports watch, or a chest strap which uses sensors to read the electrical activity of your heart. The pros for using a chest strap are accuracy. You'll get a much more stable heart rate reading using one of these. The downside is remembering to pack it and put it on before you start rowing. Connection can sometimes be a bit tricky too, often needing to moisten the strap and kind of replace the batteries quite often, but as long as you get into the routine of using it, it is the most reliable option. Watches with optical sensors that can see the blood flow change as your heart beats can be more convenient, especially if it's a watch that you wear all day anyway, as there's no real risk of leaving it behind. But what you gain in always having it, you do lose in accuracy. Not all watches are inaccurate, and often it is down to user error than the watch's fault, but take my whoop strap. It seems to count every stroke I take on the machine as an extra heartbeat. So if my chest strap is reading 140 BPM while I'm rowing at 20 strokes a minute, the whoop thinks my heart rate is 160 BPM. To be fair, I'm only wearing the whoop on my wrist. I'm gonna get one of the bicep straps just to kind of see if that improves things, but it's just not the best. So making sure the watch is snug on your wrist helps too, not so tight it take, take, cuts off your circulation though, as does having a smooth, non-jerky stroke. But if you read enough articles about people using optical sensors on the watches for rowing, you will see more frustration than success. When choosing a watch as a heart rate sensor though, do take a look at whether it will broadcast uh, your heart rate over Bluetooth. Because um, if you want to see your heart rate on the monitor, you totally need that, or uh, Bluetooth or AMP Plus, really. Um, for instance, the Fitbit Blaze didn't broadcast heart rate via Bluetooth, but the Garmin Vivo Active 4 does. In fact, I'll stick a link from DC Rainmaker for, on how to do this with the Garmin watches. But finally, what about the Apple Watch? Well, I actually find that the heart rate reading from the Apple Watch is really accurate when rowing, usually only ever one or two beats different from the Polar chest strap that I use at the same time. But there's the kick. I have to use the polar strap at the same time because, yep, you guessed it, the Apple Watch doesn't broadcast the heart rate data via Bluetooth. You can, however, connect it to the live rowing app on iOS, and that app will show you your heart rate while you're rowing. Not an ideal solution for an Apple Watch, but it is a solution of sorts. There is one more option, though, a kind of in-between. The Polar OH-1 is a mixture of a strap and an optical sensor. Instead of a watch on your wrist, you can strap this sensor higher up on your arm where there will be less movement. Again, reports on its accuracy vary for rowing, so unless you have good reason to choose the OH-1 for rowing purposes at least, you may want to look at Bluetooth or Ant Plus chest straps if it's accuracy that you're really looking for. So assuming that you're in the market for a chest strap sensor, pretty much any of them that broadcast Bluetooth or Ant Plus will connect to your PM5. So it really does come down to price and recommendations. 
The Polar H7, H9 and H10 all work with the PM5 and the H9 and H10 will connect to two devices at the same time. So if you want to run an app on your phone and see your heart rate on the Concept2 monitor, then they are the Polar ones to go for. But it's not just Polar who make good heart rate sensors. Garmin's HRM Dual sends data out through Ant Plus and Bluetooth, as does the Wahoo ticker, which means again you can connect to the PM4 or 5 monitor via Ant Plus, and then via Bluetooth to an app on your phone. That's not to say that these two are the only options available, they're just the most popular. Cuspo, Magen, Zos, Taup, all brands I've never heard of, but they make Bluetooth chest transmitters that seem to work fine. Ultimately, if you know someone who has won the rate, listen to them, read some reviews, make your own choice. Not that it makes a difference, but I've used the Wahoo ticker and broke it within a year. But I do have a habit of hitting the handle off the sensor unit, so I now use a Polar H7 and it's been my faithful companion since 2017. Only time it's ever let me down is when I leave it at home. But as much as I swear by Polar products for their heart rate sensors, I know a lot of people who swear at them and really don't rate them, preferring Garmin or Wahoo instead. No matter what you choose, it can take a bit of time to get used to how tight to set the chest strap. One that's a little bit too tight may feel like it's restricting your breathing and too loose it'll fall down to your stomach mid-row. It's really not nice to be honest. Watches, as said before, work better if they're not moving around with every stroke, so try to get it comfortably tight enough that it'll stay in place, and try to keep it behind the notch on your wrist rather than on or past it towards the front of your hand. Connecting the PM5 to a heart rate sensor is as simple as pressing the button next to connect, and then choosing connect heart rate monitor. The PM5 will then search for a Bluetooth or Ant Plus heart sensor, and when it sees it, you just connect and confirm. If you use a rowing app on your phone like ErgZone, Crew, ErgData, or any of the many others out there, connect your heart rate sensor to the PM first, and the app will read it from there. And once you've finished your row, you can look back at the data to see how your heart reacted to the effort you put in. Or, if you're connecting to the PM5 and also to an app like Polar Beat to record your heart rate in more detail, follow that app's instructions on what to do. Most rowing apps give a good graph or summary of your heart rate when you're done. And if you connect the app to a Concept2 logbook account, you can see detailed heart rate graphs for your workout. Even better is to then register for a free ErgMonkey account, where you can read your data in much more detail. Once you've got your sensor linked to your monitor, you need to think, why have you gone through all this bother in the first place? Are you just intrigued to see how your heart rate changes through time as you row, or are you going to train according to your heart rate? One of the simplest ways to do this is to row with a heart rate cap. The Maffetone system, for instance, is designed around a low heart rate, which you don't want to go over in order to get the most out of their training protocol. It's usually 180 minus your age, but if you want to know more about this, please go to maffetone.com. More popular, though, is training in heart rate zones. Each zone is given a label. Sometimes it's numbered 1 to 5, with 1 being a very light workout at around about 50% of maximum, going up to zone 5, where the heart rate is between 95 and 100%. Or you may see the zones with letters next to them, like UT1, 2, and 3. UT meaning utilization training. And the AN range is around about zone 5, that 95 to 100%. By knowing your heart rate zones, you can tailor training to make sure you're doing it in the best way to develop your fitness, and to make sure you're not overtraining. For instance, there's the 80 20 plan, where 80% of your training is performed in zone 2, the UT2 training, and 20% is done in zone 4 or 5, the TR and AN zones. The 500 meter plan I have on the Row Along channel follows this protocol lots of long, low, steady state rows, and then some small, short, sharp, fast ones for speed and power, and to get you used to holding that speed and power. The thing is though, there's lots of different ways to look at heart rate data for training, and it's something that I'm going to cover in a different video. Don't worry though, heart rate zone training is a widely discussed topic. If you just Google it, you're going to get a bunch of hits and a bunch of articles you can read about it while you wait for me to get my thumb out. So that's it for heart rate monitors. Products will hopefully improve over time. I'm really hoping that wrist sensors will get better for rowing eventually, but for the time being, at least then, a chest strap is the way to go for accuracy. 
There's links in the video description to all the products I've mentioned today and just to let you know that if you click on one and buy one, I will get a tiny little bit of money for affiliation and kind of doing that link. But at least it lets you read the reviews. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you're interested in any of my roll along workouts, please just have a look through this channel. I've got well over 150 workouts by now to choose from. A 2K plan, a 5K plan, and a 500 meter plan. With a motivational slant and no drill sergeant style shouting in my videos. And make sure to click subscribe and the little bell to be notified when I put up any more videos. Thank you so much for coming and watching this week. Stay safe, be well, bye bye.